Welcome to this great story of the man of God, Joseph Babalola. Born in April 1904. In the nation of Nigeria, Kwara State. This man of God's testimony is simply too glorious to be ignored. Apostle Joseph A. O. Babalola was called into the ministry in 1928 at the age of 20 when he encountered the voice of God at Ikeji Arakeji while working for a road construction company as the driver of the steam roller. Babalola started his ministry that same year and God began to work with him confirming his word with outstanding miracles, notable signs and wonders. This was after he had an encounter with the angel of the Lord and guided on how his must do his ministry. This man of God had an unusual habit to prayer and fasting. Even till today, he's most known of his long prayers. One day he had a meeting with some ministers, and he told them to kneel down for a short prayer. After two to three hours of kneeling down, the ministers became frustrated and sat down, leaving only Apostle Babalola still on his knees praying for about five to six hours. The following day, they asked him, Baba, if you ask us to pray for a short prayer with you which took almost six hours, how many hours will your long prayer last? Another time, on a Sunday service around 9 p.m. While he was praying in the evening service, he prayed for 72 hours non-stop. By the time he closed his prayer, saying, In Jesus' name I pray. It was already Wednesday evening. The surprising part was that, after he finished he apologized to prolonging the prayer for a little while, and said they should go and sleep now, but the people starting laughing at him, telling him, So it's already Wednesday evening, we left you here since Sunday and have going about with our daily activities. Today is not Sunday but Wednesday. You have been standing on your feet praying for three days. Such was his passion for prayer. It seemed as if he lost track of time, whenever he would engage himself prayer. We left you here since Sunday and have going about with our daily activities. Today is not Sunday but Wednesday. You have been standing on your feet praying for three days. Such was his passion for prayer. It seemed as if he lost track of time, whenever he would engage himself prayer. A very popular prayer mountain that still exists to this day is the Orioke Anu, Mountain of Mercy Praying Ground in Osun State, Nigeria. This mountain of prayer was founded by this same Apostle Babalola. There is a spot on top of that mountain rock where he knelt down to pray and his knees pierced through, leaving a giant hole in the rock due to his long hours in praying, that hole is still over there till to date. Concerning his prayers, he often said that the prayers he prayed are enough to be raising up men and women to evangelize the nation until the second coming of Jesus Christ. Not only did he had an outstanding passion for prayer, but even for the Word. He enjoyed the Bible. His favorite book was the Book of Psalms. He read the Book of Psalms so often that he knew many chapters of the Book of Psalms by head. Concerning his character, Apostle Babalola was a man that was truly very remarkable. Very humble and simple man. He loved children very much. He had 47 children that were always in his house, that he was helping and teaching the word. He loved also helping the needy. In fact Apostle Babalola believed in the principle of of giving so much, that he gave so much that he himself had less, including his own clothes. One of the person that once attended his meeting, was much blessed by the life of the Apostle and his impact but when the person visited Apostle's house. The person was utterly surprised that the famous apostle, the miracle worker that everybody was talking about was not living in a luxurious house, even the furniture of the house wasn't what one would expect. And that's because he had devoted his life to helping the widows and the needy. His personality was very simple and calm. He was kind to everyone. When approached by the rich and the poor, 
he would attend the poor first before the rich because he never despised the poor. His house was always filled with guests and people looking for his help. And even when he was busy or tired he never turned them away. People would come asking for counseling or prayer even when he was eating, and he would stop eating and attend them. Some couldn't even wait for him when he was bathing, they would be asking for his help even when he was in his bathroom. He was too humble and kind that you would sometimes pity for him. His wife, Dorcas Babalola always advised him to rest but he hardly rested. One time he confessed to his church that he had spent more than ten days without ever having time to sleep. His associates, people who did the work of God with him, said that his body was just not normal, it seemed that his body was supernatural. At times when he was on fasting and they not fasting, if they were to travel long distance by feet or working, the people not fasting would be tired while for him being on many days of fasting he would still be strong. When it comes to his miracles and supernatural things around his life, I can only conclude that that was his normal life. The supernatural was so natural to him that to travel abroad he didn't need an aircraft, he just called his ministers to prayer, as they prayed they would just disappear and appear in another country. Just as Philip did in the Bible. His demonstrations of the power of God in confronting deities of darkness was simply overwhelming. He had a series of face-to-face -face encounter with the powers of darkness. He was so full of the power of the Holy Ghost that anywhere he found evil powers, agents of darkness, witches, and wizards, powerful idols and terrible demonic personalities, he stood up to demonstrate the supremacy of God over them. In many power encounters with the witch doctors and other demonic priests, God always glorified himself through his servant, Apostle Joseph Babalola. He was a serious trouble for the kingdom of darkness. One time when he wanted to plant his church, he went to king so he could get the land for the church. But the king he himself being a demonic king and did not like Babalola because of his work for God. He gave him a banished bush. That nobody dares going there, people who dared entering that bush never made it back. The king giving this bush it was sort of like punishment for the good work Babalola was doing. It was like when John the Beloved was punished by being sent into the island of Patmos so that he might go and die there. But to the king's outmost surprise, Apostle thanked him for sending him there. When he got to the place with his prayer warriors, he first rang his bell, and with a very loud voice said, O oh God arise and let your enemies in this bush be scattered, that was he said, suddenly, they heard some people running, falling, and rising up inside the bush. They never saw anybody but the heard movements of sound of scattering. Some of the people who actually witnessed this things are still alive even today. After some time there was calm, then he ordered his people who came with cutlass to start cutting the bush. As they were cutting the bush, from the mountains, they saw a very huge python crawling down. Those cutting the grasses wanted to run away. But the man of God said to them, stay there. Continue cutting the grass. They continued to cut and the serpent came majestically. This was a kind of python that swallow a human without trace. The serpent did not go to anybody else but Apostle Babalola. He just watched it as it was approaching towards him. Then he said, Let the fire of the God of Elijah fall upon this serpent. And it was as if electricity passed through the serpent. As it immediately died and dried up. Hallelujah! Many more of such were the testimonies of the man of God. God used him mightily, as the blind received their sight. The dumb spoke, the dead came back to life, the crippled walked, the demon possessed delivered, lepers were made whole, pregnant women that delayed to deliver for years, gave birth, he entered forbidden places and silenced the demons the gods that ruled territories. 
many and many people were healed from incurable and terminal diseases. He was indeed a man sent from God. Apostle Joseph Babalola went home at the age of 55 years. Before he departed he spoke of his death ahead of time. And when the time came, he called for two of his ministers who were close to him. He asked the two of them to kneel and began to talk to them rehearsing his experiences in ministry from the beginning when he received the call to the present day and all the challenges he had met in ministry. He spoke of how within the limit of human possibility he had done his best. He then asked each of them to pray for him that if there had been any sin he, Babalola, had committed in the course of his ministry from the beginning to that very day that God should forgive him. Thereafter he himself prayed the last prayer and made the benediction. After the benediction, Babalola told them, Now I thank God the way is clear. But they didn't understand. He encouraged them to be faithful and thereafter he dismissed them. They went to the morning service, where Babalola was different that day, he didn't even stand during the time of singing and praise. After the service, the congregation moved straight to the maternity home for the dedication but Babalola went straight to the house to rest. Babalola called Pastor J.S.B. Odessona reminded him of a young man that they had had met at Abaddon few days before Babalola had promised to help with his wedding. This man had reached the age of marriage but had no father or any helper to see him through. Babalola then took it upon himself to give him the support he needed and reminded the general superintendent of the church to expedite action on the matter. This was his last act of mercy before he left for eternity. His last prayer that he made while with his associates was, that all the people of the earth that their salvation may be sure and not once did he make mention of his immediate family. Later most people at the house left for the evening service, while Michael Isajimi, one of the assistants with Babalola stood at the entrance of the door of the room. Around 4 p.m., the walls of the room where Babalola was began to vibrate as if there was a tremor, but the cause of the movement could not be located or traced. Thirty minutes later Babalola breathed heavily three times, as if to say God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit, and like lightning the man was gone. He was no more. It was exactly forty days to the time he told his mother, Martha Talabi Rotimi, that he would be going to call Jesus. The entire room shook and yet the window panes did not break. Michael who was guarding the door cried with a loud voice to summon the elderly men to come. As they opened the door to the room, a wave of power hit them and they all fell to the ground. By the time they rose up and moved near, they found he was lifeless. They began to pray while Babajide sent for Medayes who was preaching at the evening service to stop his sermon, close the service immediately and come down to the house they all surrounded Babalola, each one holding a part of his body and they prayed earnestly from 5 p.m. till 7 p.m. for Babalola to come back to life but there was no answer. Medayes began to tearfully plead in prayer, Lord, what is our sin? What have we done wrong? Where have we missed it? It was then that a vision was shown to one of them where he saw Babalola before mighty gates of heaven and entering through the gate, he laid his sword at the feet of the Lord Jesus. The Lord then told the seer that Babalola could not return to them again as they desired because the heavens have already received him. Indeed this Babalola left a great history in Nigeria that never be forgotten. Glory be to the name of the Lord.